One of the things that uh, uh, evolutionists need to sell the idea of evolution, they need to convince you that the Earth is billions of years old. They got to do this, right? Because if the Earth is only a few thousand years old, that's not enough time for the revolution to work. So they need it to be billions of years old. Folks, you got to trust me, I could spend hours and hours giving you the scientific evidence to show the Earth is not billions of years old. But let me just give you a couple of, of very simple things here. First of all, when you look at a fossil, we've been conditioned to believe that it takes millions of years for things to turn into a fossil. I want you to know that's not true. It doesn't take a long time for things to turn into a fossil. Let me give you an example. Do you know right now that's been discovered in archaeology, that's on display in creation science museums around the world, are regular modern artifacts that have been discovered that are completely fossilized. For example, a bowler's hat, stone, completely fossilized, a derby hat. Apparently, the cavemen monkeys uh, millions of years ago were wearing derby hats. Okay? Bags of flour, sausage links, even a skeletal foot inside of a cowboy boot. Did you know that? Most people, I guarantee you, you're never going to see any of these pictures in your school science books. But they exist. They have been discovered in archaeology. They're one of the big secrets that the evolutionists don't talk about and don't put in the school textbooks. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. I, I uh, I was going to a speaking engagement one time in Livonia. This was a few years ago. And I remember I stopped into the science store because there was a, I had some time to kill. I got into town early, and there was a strip mall. And so I go into the strip mall, uh, and there were, there's a science store. So I go into the science store, and I'm looking around, and I noticed on the shelf there was this bone. It was probably about the size of my finger. And there was a little placard there. It's, it said that they were selling the bone for $50. $50. And they said, 40-million-year-old bone. So I look at the bone and I go, so I say to the gal working behind the counter, I go, how do I know this bone is 40 million years old? How do I know it's not just a couple hundred years old? And she goes, um, let me get the owner. And I said, well, who's he? And she goes, well, he's a retired scientist. And I go, oh, bring him out, bring him out. <laughs> so he comes out, nice enough man. He's actually wearing a white lab coat. So hey, that's okay. So he comes out, can I help you? So I said, yes, I'm, a, I'm in the market for a 40 million year old bone. And I noticed that you have one. I said, but how do I know it's really 40 million years old? How do I know it's not just a couple hundred years old? And he said, well, sir, you can clearly see that this bone has turned to rock. And I said, oh, so let me make sure I understand the permineralization process. And I explained the process to him. I said, do I have that correct? And he said, yes. And I said, okay, how do I know that didn't happen to that bone just a couple hundred years ago? And he said, well, sir, because it takes a lot longer than that for things to fossilize. They can't fossilize in such a short period of time. I said, oh. I said, are you aware of the fact that there are modern artifacts that have been discovered in archaeology that are on display right now that tourists can go see, like a bowler's hat, derby hat, bags of flour, sausage links, even a skeletal foot inside of a cowboy boot, uh, axe chops into trees, completely fossilized dogs in modern trees with axe chopping in them, and, so, and things like this? Are you aware of these? And he said, well, yes, I've heard of those, but those aren't really fossils. I said, wait a minute. The derby hat that's solid stone is not a fossil. And he said, that's right. I said, okay. If I, and by now his employees are gathering on watching. And I was like, okay, if I took your bone off the shelf and I sat it here and I take that derby hat and I sit it right next to it, you're a scientist. Is there any difference in the physical properties of these two objects? And he said, well, no. And I said, so they are both made of the very same mineral, the very same rock, correct? And he said, yes. And I said, then why do you say that bone is a fossil and this hat is not? And he said, well, because the bone is millions of years old and the hat clearly is not. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He said that. So I just stared at it. And his employees are saying, there's this awkward silence. I didn't say anything. I just stared at him. And then he said, after a few seconds of silence, he said, 
Well, when you make me word it that way, it makes my argument sound silly. And I said to him, hey, you're the scientist, I'm just a customer, that's all. So I shook his hand, I said, thank you very much, and I left, okay. I mean, he's a nice man, I'm not trying to pick on him, but the idea, folks, is we have been conditioned to believe things that don't have to be that old really somehow are that old. We don't have to believe it, we don't have to buy it. Radiometric dating, it doesn't work. The radiometric dating methods that the evolutionary scientists use to date things to be millions and billions of years old, they don't work. They're based on all kind of assumptions that you cannot make. They're actually based on the assumption the Earth really is billions of years old. It's based on the assumption that they know the parent-daughter ratios that existed in those, in those isotopes to begin with. It's based on a bunch of assumptions that they cannot know. So what it does is it produces for them the ages that they expect.